Time for another What Does This Button Do show. It's an educational show about smartphones and tablets by us, the Geeks on Tour. Hey, everyone. We and are, we need our hats. Oh, that's right. We're not in costume. You know, we wear these hats so we don't keep our, don't take ourselves too seriously. And, and you shouldn't take us too seriously <laughs> either. But learn what you can. And we are old dogs learning <laughs> new tricks. So, do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? Usually. And do you have questions about your Android phone or your iPad tablet? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we have been playing with technology for 30 years. We love it. We are geeks, but we really like to teach. We think the best way to learn is in small pieces on a regular basis. So that's why we do this weekly show. We usually go about 45 minutes. All of our content is collected on our website, geeksontour.com. Well, that's really good information. <laughs> Where are we now, Chris? We are at home in Fort Lauderdale, and that was the picture from the solstice. Oh, we were right. hoping to see the full moon rise, but, but it look was at those a clouds cloudy. over there. But I just thought this picture came out really nice. It did. It really did. That's just a block away from where we are. Okay. Yeah, that's just our regular walk, isn't it? Yep. Okay, here on today's show, we are going to have a tip of the day, straighten those horizons. That's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> Beginner's lesson will be freeing up space on your phone. Our app of the day is going to be pay by pay phone. phone. I didn't write it in there, but we'll have it up there for you. If you have questions, ask them here in the comments. The show is recorded on YouTube on our Geeks on Tour channel and available for you to see that anytime. We do invite you to become a member at geeksontour.com. If you become a member, you get a lot of extra benefits, not least of which the ability to ask us questions. And the show notes. And I always like to remind people about the show notes. So last week we taught a grab bag of tips, mm -hmm. but let's say that you watched it and you remember learning a good thing about how to put emergency information on the lock screen of your iPhone, but you didn't take any notes and you don't remember what it was we said. Well, if you remember, <laughs> we took the notes for you and let me show you. So I'm going to go to Geeks on Tour. Com, and you just click on the menu item that says weekly show. And from there, you just scroll down. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Scroll down. It's always first talking about the current weekly show. But if you scroll down, all 85 episodes are listed a little bit about what they are. And then here are the notes for members. So I tap on that and then you will need to be logged in as a member. And then you can scroll down until you see the part about the emergency information on the lock screen. And notice that you could get this in PDF format as well. You could download it and print it out but if you just want to look up that one question, here it is. In case of emergency, on the Apple, you use the health app, medical ID, show on lock screen. If that's all you needed to know, you're done. If you want to watch the video about it, you click on this link, and that will take you to the YouTube video right at the point where we start talking about in case of emergency. All right. Nice. What else you got? Uh, well, that's quick tip. Okay. Quick tip. Straighten that horizon. <laughs> so are you one of the people like my husband here who walks into a room, sees a picture on the wall that's crooked and just 
has to go straight. It's it. an ADHD thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm that way with pictures online. I look at a picture and I say, oh, come on. Couldn't you have straightened that before you shared it? It is so easy. So let's Especially show you. sunsets that just and sunrises. You know, when the thing is, oh, no, it's not good at all. All right. So let's get on to that. Ready? Yep. Got it. Okay. And I'm going to show you on Google Photos, but every photo editor has this feature. It's so easy. So I go to Google Photos and I have a crooked, I made sure to take a crooked picture. And that's the same one that we showed you from, from the solstice. <laughs> I made sure that it was crooked so that we could show you how to straighten it. You tap on the edit. And it's this option here that is the symbol for crop and rotate. Those arrows mean rotate. You get this and you just tap where it says zero and you drag one way or the other and notice the grid that appears on the screen. So it helps you know what straight is. And I let go and it's straight. I can say, okay, that looks straight. But I just can't resist. I have to do a little bit of auto and a little bit of pop. I just love the Google Photo Editor. Now that's a nice picture. And and the horizon straight. Suitable for framing. <laughs> and if you touch and hold on it, you'll see how dull it was before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm done. And I save. Every photo editor can straighten. so. You know, whatever you're using is available to, to straighten your stuff, but we prefer Google Photos, right? And it's usually called rotate. I still stay straightened because that's what Picasso called it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still a Picasso fan. Yes, you are. All right. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or else. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Our beginner's lesson today. Are you ready for that? Freeing up space on your phone or tablet. Let's see if there's any comments over there first. Is oh, there anything right. that needs to well, be? Let's see. How dealt can, with? Oh, we'll put a couple up there. How can I be sure I'm not a come back? Yeah. Uh oh. It, it was even up. It just broke midstream. No full screen. That's weird. Can't get full screen. Hmm. Tom Parks has problems getting full screen, and he has issues, and I, I just don't know what to tell him. But Paul Goldberg says he's not getting full screen either. Yeah. So if one of you guys figure it out, maybe you can share with the other. <laughs> no full screen here either. Uh, try on the, on the YouTube link. That would be my choice. There's something about it. And yeah, things. Hmm. This stuff isn't perfect. This is new technology. We didn't even have this a couple of years ago, and we are just living on the bleeding ledge. Okay. So. And Art's asking about deleting stuff, and how does he know he's deleting stuff that is okay to delete? And that hopefully we'll get to that in the in the lesson. I think. And it's if important. not, we'll add more later. We'll be working on that for sure. Okay. Okay. Let's get that okay. screen. And that's what we're going to talk about. I'm. What are you doing? I'm just getting all these notices. I was trying to tell it not to do it. <laughs> I'll just have to keep swiping them off. You don't know how to do that. Right. Well, <laughs> I, I thought. What does that button do? I thought that uh, do not disturb would turn off those, but it's but it's not, and I don't want Wi-Fi. Okay, so we are back here though first. We have eight slides to go through. Our topic today is about freeing up space on your phone or tablet, and we're gonna talk in general, and then I'll do a little demo on both iPhone and Android. So what's the deal? The problem is when phones get full, they just don't work very well anymore. You can't do your updates. You can't take more photos. You can't add any new apps. You can't download anything new. 
And some things just don't work right because they need some free space to work in. So that's why we're doing the topic today. It's just generally applicable. First, a little bit of language. This is a beginner's lesson after all. Remember, you know, we are not going to be teaching you everything. This is a beginner's lesson. So you need to know what is a GB. A GB is a gigabyte. It's a measurement of storage capacity. And it starts, it actually starts with byte, but that's just way too small to consider. KB means kilobyte. Think of a little thimble full. Megabyte is 1,000 roughly kilobytes. Think like a file drawer. Gigabyte is 1,000 roughly megabytes. Think of that like a walk-in closet. And terabyte is 1,000 gigabytes. Think of that like an airplane hanger. So gigabyte is the what you buy. When you get a phone, you will get an 8 gigabyte, a 16 gigabyte, a 32, a 64. Do they come in 128? I think they might. But if they don't, they will soon. Yeah, it's measured by gigabytes. And you want the biggest one you can afford. I didn't think so at first. I bought a 16 gigabyte phone and it has an SD card for extended storage. But that just it, I will get a 32 next time. <laughs> How much storage does your device have? So everybody watching, whether if you have an Apple, go to your settings, generals, storage, and then iCloud, sorry, settings, and then general, and then storage and iCloud and then manage storage. And you will see how much total you have and how much available you have. On the Android, you go to settings and it's in the device section um, or in the general section on some of them and then storage. And that one gives you a little graphic representation of how much you have. It's only the gray there at the end that is empty. So I made sure for this demonstration that both of my phones are very full. <laughs> so, and this is a live demonstration. So there are, this will be interesting. I made sure that they are full so you can see how to clean them up a bit. One thing to know, is your stuff really on your device or are you just seeing it there but it actually lives in the cloud if at all possible i think you want your stuff to live in the cloud meaning in an account of yours on an online service such as google photos or onedrive or dropbox if they're in the cloud then you can freely clean off things on your phone. But some stuff has to be on the device, like apps and some offline data and some text messages. So the point of this slide is just, if possible, you we recommend to use cloud-based storage instead of on-device storage. So what can you safety, safely delete? Well, there's, I, I call it the, the DAO, T-A-O. <laughs> <laughs> the DAO of, of deleting. You can delete temporary stuff, which means cache. Cache is just the temporary work files that apps use. And you don't even know exactly what it is, but you can clear out cache. It just gets recreated the next time you use the program. Or trash. As you'll see, the first demonstration on iPhone is going to be that when you delete pictures, they don't actually get erased from your phone. They go to uh, something similar to a recycle bin, and you can empty that recycle bin. Apps, you can only remove apps that you have installed. And I say you can safely delete that because you can just go get them back at any time. Right. The apps that come pre-installed from usually your 
cellular provider, you can't take those off. However, you can disable them. And that, and that does free up a little bit of space. Not much. And I will show you that. And then there is data that is on your device that you don't have elsewhere, or you don't, or that you do have elsewhere, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So if you have music on your computer, and you also have a copy of that music on your phone, if necessary, you might need to delete that music. Text messages can take up space as well. Presumably, you don't care about text messages except for your current ones, but that's up to you. All right. There are apps that will do the cleanup for you. And here's just a few names. CCleaner, Clean Master, Battery Doctor, App Cache Cleaner, Avast has a, a cleaning portion. Generally, they don't do anything more than you can do yourself with what I'm showing you. And those apps take up space. Now that said, I know lots of people who swear by their cleaning apps. They use them all the time and they love them. So we don't. I do my own cleanup, but I will show you what I'm talking about. I have C Cleaner on my Nexus phone and I've used it and yeah, but when you have it on there, so it uses a certain amount of storage space already. Not a ton. No, but, but some, some. And when you clean stuff off, are you cleaning off less or more <laughs> than what the app is taking up. So those are considerations, I think. Yeah, and, and we will show you that. But maybe you just don't trust yourself to do it yourself and you need an app. I would say do some Googling, read some reviews. Oh, there's one more. Keep going. Um, the Android and the Apple, we are going to do a, a little demo. How to find your numbers, how much space you have, We'll do the easiest things first, offloading photos and videos to the cloud. We'll talk about that. Uninstalling apps and then a couple miscellaneous settings. I'm going to start with the iPhone. There it is. There it is. And let me get to the, all right. So first, how to see what you're using. I go to settings and general and then scroll down storage and iCloud usage. Now iCloud is something iCloud is Apple's cloud storage and I do use it but that's not what we're talking about. Storage is your on device storage. Check it out. I have zero bytes available. Uh-oh. I did a good job preparing <laughs> for this lesson. <laughs> if you tap on manage storage, you will see the details. You will see in order of the biggest user, what is using the most of your storage. And then you can deal with it from there. Now, I'm going to start with what I call the low hanging fruit. On the iPhone, I think that that is your deleted photos. So if I and I'm if I use the Apple Photos app, then you have these albums. One of those albums is called "Recently Deleted," and notice I have 461 photos in there. So here I thought or I know a lot of people think that, oh, I've deleted all the bad photos. I've deleted everything I want to delete, but they're still taking up space because they're in this equivalent of a recycle bin. I am now looking at all 436 photos. I tap select, and then I get an option to delete all. Delete 493 items. This action cannot be undone. Well, but that's okay. These were pictures that I deleted. Now I'm just, I'm just emptying the garbage. Delete 493 items. Now let's, I'm just, I'm curious. Let's see how that affected storage almost full. 
marathon. It takes a minute, see the spinning circle? It takes a minute for your phone to realize that something has changed and give you the new information. So let's go do something else first. And that is on the iPhone, once again, this is a special setting regarding text messages. So just in settings and messages, there's a setting that I'll bet you very few of you have ever changed and that is keep messages forever. <laughs> Me, and that's exactly what it means. So they are taking up some space. Text messages aren't much, but still, I think one year is plenty. Delete older messages. This will permanently delete all text messages from your device that are older than a year. That's fine with me. OK. Now let's do another one. If you are using iCloud Photo Library, and now that's something special. If you don't know if you're using it, you probably aren't. It's relatively new. It's underneath iCloud and Photos. And there it is, iCloud Photo Library. This works kind of like Google Photos in that it gathers your pictures from every Apple device and puts it all in your iCloud account online and synchronizes all those photos with the current device. So if you have Download and Keep Originals, a ton of space is being used on this device for that. You should have Optimize iPhone Storage. That will keep a much smaller version of the picture on the phone. Here, if your phone is low on space, full resolution photos and videos are automatically replaced with optimized versions. Full resolution versions are stored in the cloud. That's the setting you want. But I actually believe that you shouldn't use the Apple Photos at all. <laughs> you should use the Google Photos. Absolutely. And, and then it doesn't need any photo on your device. You tap on the menu and settings, manage device storage, free up space, and it will actually delete the photos off the phone. 527 photos. And here you can trust it's OK because it says these photos and videos have already been safely backed up to your Google Photos library in the cloud. And they will stay there. They will just be deleted from the phone. Now, this is just the first step for deletion here, right? Right. <laughs> these are still going to where? To the recently deleted recently album. Deleted, which is like the recycle bin. Like the recycle bin, yeah. And it tells you here. One more step. Yeah. To free up device storage, delete items from the recently deleted album. OK. But I already showed you that, so I'm not, I'm not going to go there. The other thing, so that's, that's the low-hanging fruit is the deleted pictures. You know, you're, you're emptying the trash. The next is photos and videos. Now, if you have any videos, they take up a lot of space. I think they're the biggest hog, aren't they? Yeah. So that also can be low-hanging fruit. And some of them are total mistakes. <laughs> I've seen people that had a half-hour video on here. Of their pocket. Right. <laughs> they didn't even realize it was turned on. Videos are huge. So just deleting a two-minute video and here you tap the trash, delete video. That will free up space after <laughs> you do what? You go into your recently deleted and clear it out. So select and delete all. Delete 528 items. And then there's one last thing, and that is, what if even after all that, you still don't have enough room? That means that you have apps taking up space. And going back to our storage setting, 
and that's iCloud. So I want general and storage in iCloud and then manage storage. So it's already telling me that I have freed up 2.2 gigabytes and that number will grow over time. And this says, oh, look at that. The right after photos, the next biggest hog is the word application. So I can tap there and I can delete app. Or how do you normally delete apps? You normally delete apps out on your home screen and there it is, long press until everything wiggles, tap the X, delete word, that will delete all its data also, yes, and then press your home button to stop them wiggling. Now, if you really are just working to clean up space, it would be good to stay in the storage area to do, to do all this. I just wanted to show you from the home screen because you may have done that before. So if you see something here, you know, Skyview is taking up 72 megabytes. That's not huge, but, and I don't use it, so I can tap there and delete app. Yeah, I have a lot of apps on my phone or phones that I've loaded just to take a look at them, just to try them out. I may use them or I might find them useful, but they might be taking up too, too much space. I'll dump them. I can always yeah. get them back. Yeah. You can always get them back. Exactly. You just go to your app store, go to the purchased section, whether they cost or they're free, they're in the purchase section and you can just download them. Now, here's a weird thing. Google Photos. Why is it 278 megabytes? That's the cache. Um, so you say, well, the pictures, the pictures are all in the cloud. Why is it using up any space on the phone? Well, it's those little thumbnails. It creates those thumbnails and that cache can grow pretty big. The only way to clear the cache in an iPhone is to delete the app and reinstall it. And I do that periodically with Google Photos on the iPhone. All right, and I lied. There is one last thing I just want to mention. <laughs> Always one. When you double tap and you see this multitasking list, some people think that it's really important to clear those off. It is not. That does, they do not take up hardly any space at all. They're just listed here for convenience. All right, that's iPhone. Now we go to Android. Do we want to stop for questions in between or go straight to Android? Keep going. Okay. All right. For this, I want to start. I did download just because I'm we're learning here all the time too. So I figured let's download C Cleaner and just see what, what it does. So I want to show you. Here is C Cleaner, which is an app that will manage storage for you and apparently it won't go landscape <laughs> so it's telling me on this phone out of 11 gigabytes total available i have used 9.73 there's only 1.3 no yeah there's just that little bitty bit there if i tap analyze this takes a minute but not too long it will tell me how much space it will be able to free up for me just by tapping the C cleaner. And it's going through all the apps and telling me cache. So it's saying cache will free up 1.24 gigabytes. That's pretty nice. All right, and then other caches etc. So it tells me that 1.28 gigabytes can be saved. Pay attention to that number. So if I use CCleaner, just by tapping clean, I will free up 1.28 gigabytes. 1.28. Oh, all top one. But yeah. notice that the cache is 1.24 of that. So I want to show you without CCleaner, how do I clear the cache? You go into settings. And this is the low-hanging fruit 
of, of Android. the Android. Settings and storage. And this takes a minute for it to analyze and see what all is going on. This is a 16 gigabyte phone, but the operating system takes five of that. So you only have, I only have 11 gigabytes to work with. And it's telling me it's just that little gray area that's open. There's cache. It says that there's 1.25 gigabytes in cache. All I have to do is tap on it, tap OK, and my phone is clearing that cache for me. And it, it will, as I say, it takes, it takes a while for these things to refresh. OK. The next thing, it's still, I did do it, didn't I? <laughs> I thought so. Just let me make sure this will clear cache for all apps. OK. <clears throat> all right. I did do it. So it, it is working. Ah, there we go. Now we're down to 12K. That's really small. That's just a, a few dust particles <laughs> is all that is. And notice that my free space here. So with that one tap, you have freed up a ton of space. Now, if you had a bunch of space in cash. Now I do this fairly regularly because I'm I'm always full. <laughs> <laughs> and that cash often is small. So then I have to resort to other things. One of the other things is uh, your Google Photos. So I go into Google Photos and remember the way the what Google Photos does is automatically uploads every picture taken to your Google account in the cloud. Then what you're looking at on here, I mean, look at this. I can go back, I can go back to 1980. You had a digital <laughs> camera back in 1980? Right. Well, these are things I scanned, all right. <laughs> I can go back to our wedding, look at that. People don't believe me when I say we wore these propeller beanies at our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> We did. Uh, so those photos can't possibly reside on this phone, but it feels like it. So these photos are actually on the web. I can delete everything on the phone. Menu and settings and free up device storage. Remove original photos and videos from your device that are already backed up. Good idea. And I do this regularly, so I only have 72, but some people have 3,000. Or more. That will free up a lot of space. And on. So it's deleting? It's deleting photos from the device, and it says that it has recovered you know, nearly 100 megabytes. That's pretty nice. Now, this is one of the things that has been changing with Google Photos, at least on the Android. The Apple's always been the same because it always puts them in that recycle bin or the recently deleted area. So look for some changes coming up. I was reading about it to where that just to make it easier for people to understand this. All right. So the last thing is, or next thing is apps. I have a ton of apps. I probably don't need them all. On an Android, you also have the option, or on some Androids, my Android, this is a Samsung Galaxy S5, has an SD card. Let me show you that. So right here, 32 gigabyte SD card, and I can store some stuff on there. I originally thought that was going to be my savior, that I didn't care that I only had 16 gigabytes on the phone. I have 32 gigabytes on that card. Sure. But it doesn't help that much. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going into settings and I'm going to go to app manager, applications and application manager. And I want to see how about just moving this app from the phone to the SD card. 
see this move to SD card, but why is it gray? <laughs> Probably because you can't move that particular app to the SD card. And I find that most apps will not allow you to. But I, I did find one to use as an example here, and that's Evernote. Evernote is taking up 189 megabytes. That would be great if it could just go to the SD card. So 190 megabytes total. The application is 65. The data that it's using is 124. Let's move to SD card. But remember that number, 190 for total. So it takes a minute, but it is moving that app from the internal memory storage. We use those terms pretty synonymously with phones these days to the SD card. But what I've learned is that it can't move it completely. Just the way these work, a big part of the app has to remain in the internal memory. So what we're going to see is that it does not free up 190 megabytes. It frees up some. It's still a good thing to do. Okay, application move. Notice that the total is now 198. But application, there's still 40 megabytes in use on the internal memory. But it has moved the data over. So, so that, that is a good one to move over. The other thing to do is to delete apps. So let's say I wanted to delete Amazon Kindle. I wouldn't ever want to delete Amazon Kindle. That's one of my favorite ones. But notice you are not allowed to uninstall it. It came pre-installed. You are not allowed to uninstall it. Let me choose one here that I really don't use, Amazon Music. I can't uninstall it because it came with the phone. But I can uninstall updates and then disable it. That doesn't remove all of the storage, you know, that does not free up all of the storage space, but it will free up some. All right, and then ones that you can uninstall do. I can just disable that one. Yeah, it doesn't like being disabled. And I, I'm not going to, I might want to play with music sometime. <laughs> but it has, it has freed up some stuff. I noticed it says 292. Ooh, that sounds like a lot. Ah, no, it's just K. So that is not, not a lot. So there is a lot to learn. I think we can, I'm done. Okay. There are a couple of questions here. Let's see. Love the idea of scanning pics on a cell phone. I wish I could put these on the screen. I've tried all different locations, trying to eliminate shadow or glare. In, yeah, but yeah that one's about so photos. So I'll, okay. I'll take that one offline. Offline, okay. Yeah. But if there, I thought I saw some that were about the storage. Okay. All right, Ron says, does doing a hard reset on your phone clear the cache? Oh, absolutely. And we, we did a hard reset go back to our places. Um, we did a hard reset in one of our episodes. And yes, that wipes everything off the phone and puts it back. Oh, wait, hard reset. No, you're just talking about holding down the... Turning it off and turning it back on. Does it clear power? the cache? No. no. No, that stays no. in there. But if you do, do a, a... Factory a, reset. Yes, a system reset on the phone, which we're not recommending right now <laughs> that you do that. But sometimes that's the way to do it. Ron also says, when I move apps to my SD card, they appear back in me internal memory when they're used. I have to move them back to the SD card. I haven't noticed that. I, I, I believe you. Yeah, I would check that. I believe that. you. I mean, I have just stopped moving them to the SD card. Yeah, it, just, apps, it doesn't make that much difference. They want to be on the phone. And that kind of makes sense. I might take that SD card out. Then then what would happen? So yeah. the SD card is good if you want to store your photos there or videos or music. I mean, just yeah. data files. Yeah, and, and they're great. Now, 
obviously you don't get those on all Android phones, and it's certainly not there at all <laughs> on any they, iPhone. They seem to be going away in general, yeah, so I, so I don't, I don't want to depend on them. <laughs> right. So bottom line, when you get a new phone, get one with a lot of Get capacity. the biggest memory. I'm, I'll, I'll get Pay a 64 if I can afford it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So a couple other people talking about the full uh, full screen capability. Um, some people can get full screen and some people can't. I don't know. Uh, that's probably a function of your stuff because other people can get full screen and I'm not having that issue, but other issues do crop up as we go along. Mary May says that her sound stopped. I hope she's still on and I hope she got hers back. Mm. Uh, but I didn't see anybody else mention it. Valderi Valdera, the cloud, a new thing for me. Can we ask questions about it for photos? Absolutely ask oh, away, yes. but we won't answer them during <laughs> this show. Okay. Well, the cloud, yeah, you want cloud stored. You we want things so. stored in the cloud. If, I mean, on this phone, when I take a picture, it goes to the phone, but because of Google Photos, it also goes up to the cloud. So if I drop this phone overboard. <laughs> or flush it down the toilet. No big deal. Well, no real big I deal. Go, I go get another phone. <laughs> I put in my credentials for my Google account in the cloud, and I see all my pictures again. And there's lots more and more data is being stored in the cloud, meaning on the internet, in an account with your username and password hmm. and not on the devices. That's pretty, yep. That's, that's the way it's going. So if you ever have a choice. Get the bigger one. Get the, <laughs> get the cloud storage. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, a couple other issues there, but that's pretty, it. pretty much it for questions, I hope, unless I miss some. Okay. All right. Other questions? Go ahead. Old dogs learning new tricks. Geeks on tour. Like us on Facebook. Please like us. And if you're enjoying this show, tell your friends. Let them enjoy it too. App of the week. Here's something that we've been using. I've used it a few times. Pay by phone. This is something that you'll find more and more of. It is a way that everybody remembers the old... Uh, parking meters. Well, now a lot of places that make you pay for parking will allow you to do it by phone or by app. So this is the app of the week. It's pay by phone. And I really, really like it. I don't like, you know, I'll go to the beach or something and I won't have uh, a $5 bill or enough coins or whatever. Sometimes some of these meters will allow you to use your credit card. I'm not real big on putting my credit card in a very public place like that because some hackers may be in there with skimmers. I don't know. It's a little scary these days, so you want to pay attention. I would rather use an app on my phone with my credit card information, and I think that's the safest way to do it. Basically, you download the pay by phone app, and you enter your location code. You have to set up some, some payment properties when you install it. Enter your parking duration, how long you plan on being there. And a, the, one of the greatest things about it is you can, you can add time to the meter without going to the meter. That is just so cool. I, that, I think that's probably the best part of it. And you get a little alert. So if you if you're at... A restaurant eating dinner and you just totally forget that you had to pay a meter your phone will give you a little alert hey you only got five minutes left do you want to add more time you just tap yes and you're good to continue eating your dessert <laughs> yeah so features you can pay for parking and that is a secure payment you can extend your parking remotely that's the one that we just talked about you can manage your text reminders you can manage your account everything can be done on the app some of this stuff can be done also on a web browser. 
So new, new user registration, there is help and it's available in a lot of locations in the United Kingdom, France, the US and Canada. And they're just starting with toll payments too. There's a bridge in Vancouver that will take your toll, your bridge oh. toll. I thought that was pretty cool. So when you're traveling in an area where, you, where it doesn't work with your transponder Could for be. tolls. Yeah, so that might be a, a good way to go. Think about it. All right, getting late. Did you learn something? True or false? A 689 KB file is big, kilobytes. Well, that looks like a big number, but the KB is the very tiniest unit. So no, that is not a big file. Okay. Given the average file sizes, which type of file is usually the largest? Music, text, video, or photos? Video, hands down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if you want to clear up space quick, find a video, delete it. Okay, true or false? Oh no, low-hanging fruit means the easiest way to free up the most space. On Android, the number one way is? Cache. So mm -hmm. just go to your storage settings and cache and tap on it. It will delete the cache. Okay, and on the Apple? On the Apple, I say it's your recently deleted photos, just because most people don't know that they're there and they've collected. It, it does delete by itself after 60 days, but for 60 days, all your photos You're are full. collected there. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of them. Well, you can get rid of them, but... True or false, if you use Google Photos, you can delete all the pictures and videos from your device and still view them easily with the Google Photos app. True. That is... Brilliant. There are other ways of doing it. The Apple iCloud has something mm -hmm. kind of similar, but Google Photos does it best. Right. If you use Apple's iCloud photo library, make sure your setting is on either Optimize iPhone storage or download and keep originals? Optimize iPhone storage. That sounds like the right one to me. There's no option to clear a cache on an iPhone app except Safari, so the browser. Yeah. But you can accomplish it. How? By uninstalling the app and reinstalling it. So that gets rid of all of it? Yeah, brings it in that new. gets rid of both the app and all of its cache, and then it starts over clean. Kind of a pain, but it, it works, and yeah. it's no big deal. No big deal. All right, Chris, let's see. There's a couple of questions here. Definitely worth the price of getting the largest capacity for whatever device, phone, or tablet you can handle. Ron says, please tell people not to buy an 8-gigabyte phone. <laughs> Actually, I, we have... And I tried playing, this This is our live on YouTube playing yeah. full screen. Um, this little tablet is so great, but it's only eight gigabytes. Okay. And it generally, it turns into being worthless <laughs> because you need half of that for the operating system. So really you only have four gigabytes. And then you put a couple apps on there and no room for any storage of anything. It was only a hundred bucks, but it's not worth it. Yeah. Jolin says she has a 64 gig capacity Droid Turbo. It's terrific. Um, she still has 35 gigs left. I'm jealous. Yeah, we are jealous. My next phone will be as big as possible, I'm sure. All right. Okay. Is Chris. there any reason to keep cash? Will I use anything useful, useful if I delete it? My experience has been no. Cash is strict. I mean, Unlike when you delete, when you clear the cache on a computer, mm -hmm. on your browser, now all the things that it used to remember, it doesn't remember anymore. I haven't found that to be true. I delete cache on my phone all the time, and, and then there's nothing that it I miss. It doesn't seem to make any difference except give you more storage. A and some things might be a little bit slower. I mean, so for example, Google Photos keeps all those little thumbnails in cache. Mm -hmm. So if you have deleted the cache, the next time you go to Google Photos, it might be a little slower to right. show you its stuff. That makes sense. Well, Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows? Geeksontour.com, and the page is Menu Item Weekly Show. And the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters. Geeksontour.com. And the menu item is blogs and articles. Newsletters is under there. Oh. 
Okay, we do invite you to become a member of geeksontour.com. We are member supported. Yes, we that, are. It's only because of our paid members that we're able to offer this free show. Okay. So next time, we're not going to have a show on the 3rd of July. We're taking July 4th weekend off. That is our anniversary. We will wear our little hats on a water taxi. <laughs> <laughs> we got married on a water taxi here in Fort Lauderdale. So we're going to hang out and do it again. Okay. Watch for the notification for our next show. It should be on July 10th, and we will have a topic. Let us know you're watching. Leave any questions there in the comments, and we will try and get two of them. Oh, quick little note. Chris is being interviewed by Entrepreneur <laughs> using Blab, a different system. And look at our Geeks on Tour Facebook page, and you can get all that information there. So that's it for this week. We appreciate it. It's great seeing you guys. And keep asking, what does that button do? What does this button what do? What does this button do? Just don't, try it. Don't touch that. Ah, sure. Button. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Bye bye.